Hello everyone, this is Nate Harris. Um, I wanted to take a moment here and create a quick little video on the use of the uh, username CRP stuffing script that I wrote. The, the point of it, uh, to, so you can ensure that this is, uh, it does what you want it to do. Um, and, and a real quick uh, example of the use of it. So the point of the script was um, when we have <clears throat> the Azure MFA extension installed on the MPS server and you're using one-time passcodes, if you have network policies that have uh, attributes defined in them to be sent back to the Radius clients, when you use one-time passcodes, those attributes get lost. Real quickly, the reason that they get lost is because um, when you use other methods like the Authenticator app or phone calls, what happens is and, and a radius request comes into the MPS server, the MPS server processes it, and then you send it back. <clears throat> so the MFA piece of that is, how the MFA piece of that is important. When you're using an authenticator app, what happens is uh, we reach out to uh, Azure, Azure performs MFA, you get a pop-up on your authenticator app, you click accept, it sends back a response and, and then we send back a response. When you use a one-time passcode like SMS, that process changes. It comes down and then we reach out to Azure MFA. Azure MFA sees that this user is using SMS. So what it does is it generates a code, but it sends back to the MPS server a, um, basically it tells the MPS server we need that code. That generates an access challenge that we send back to the Radius client to generate the pop-up so the user can enter that code. Then we send a, it, when it gets that code, it sends back another access request that we send to Azure. And so ultimately what happens is, because we've already performed um, primary authentication, which happens down here in the network policies, when that second request comes in, we don't need to perform primary authentication again. MPS is aware that it is a, an existing, an ongoing uh, request. And so it, because the way that this works is very linear, it goes connection request policies, then the MFA extension, the network policy. As, we, as a connection request policy hands it off to the MFA extension, the MFA extension knows that this is an ongoing request. It doesn't reach down into the network policies again, and therefore, it, it becomes quote unquote unaware of these attributes. We have uh, a lot of users that run into this uh, situation. So I wrote the script to, to kind of mitigate it. It's not a perfect solution, but um, it's one that's worked for uh, several customers. So the, the way that, that we handle this in the script is where these attributes existed before in the, the network policies, those attributes get moved up into the connection request policies. The difficult, the challenge is network policies can do uh, Windows group membership checks. It sends off a thing to a DC and says, hey, what are the groups that this user is in? It sends back in a check to see if it's in there. We don't have that functionality inside of connection request policies. However, what we do have is the ability to do username checks. And what this script does, it, it, it basically, you define the names of the groups uh, that you want it to check, and then it goes out, and grabs all the users that are in that group, and it will stuff uh, the condition for that connection request policy with all those usernames. Now we've tested this up to 5,000 users, that is the limit of the commandlet, and I have uh, done testing on, there are ways you can do um, queries that exceed that, but um, what happens is when we get to a certain limit, which is not far beyond 5,000, uh, basically the MPS service crashes. So you should know that this is not a Microsoft supported setup. This is a workaround. You need to test this in your lab. We have several, um, customers that are using it, um, but um, it is not Microsoft code, um, and so you can't 
you, you, they, if you call the pick up the phone and call Microsoft, they're not going to support you. <coughs> um, so let's talk about the uh, script pump. So I kind of uh, put a fair bit of information here in the top of the script. This is mimicked inside of the uh, GitHub rep repository, but the GitHub repository also has a little bit more information, so kind of rely on that. So some of the conditions, I default to using the uh, C NPS directory. I create a directory called NPS, <coughs> and I run it from there. Uh, what it does is it, uh, it in, in short, what it does is it exports the NPS config. You define the name of the connection request policy here. You define the name of the domain where we're going to be looking. You give it credentials. It takes those credentials and, and, and turns those into an encrypted variable. Um, and then it goes and it runs the function up here. This function's job is to take those groups and then extract out the usernames and import those usernames into the script. Once it's, and you can copy this section here. You can copy it, paste it down below, and continue to paste it down for however many policies you have. Um, I recommend that you don't have policies that are much, I don't even recommend going to 5,000 if you can help it. If you can keep it around, you know, 4,000. Um, I have one user that has two, that has 8,000 total. They just created four policies, and they just created four groups and and broke those users up. But you can, the point being, you can copy this section and continue to run this uh, with the definition for each uh, connection request policy. Uh, the inside of there, it will keep up to seven days worth of uh, files. So as it exports the uh, MPS configuration, it will create a backup of that configuration. And, and then um, that way, if you ever had an issue, you could get back to a previous version. Now, the way this normally runs is uh, customers will put it inside of a scheduled task and they'll have that scheduled task run on a certain frequency and so that as user membership changes so too does the um, value that we're putting into the um, NPS configuration. So we're going to just real quick look here. Here is where I'm running the script from. This is a bunch of old stuff. Uh, the archive folder is another folder you'll need to create under the NPS folder. This is where it moves um, all the other stuff, and you can go back in here, and you can look inside, and you can see previous versions of the XML files. It, it, it's also going to create a text file so that if you have an issue, if you have a user that's that's not being matched or is being matched and you don't think it should, the text file will help you look and see what's inside of the policy because once you stuff the the connection request policy once this condition this condition called username gets stuffed with more than 256 characters this GUI can only handle 256 characters so once you exceed that this essentially just looks blank when you open it up you can still see um, more here um, and when you highlight it, you'll be able to see a bit more here. But you'll never be able to see through the GUI um, uh, all of the users. If you have thousands of users, you'll never see it here. So the script creates a text file to help you see that. So let's just quickly run it real quick. I have a couple of domains here in my lab. And what I'm going to do is I've got both of them configured to just grab what's in domain admins. You can see here, uh, you, can, you can define multiple groups um, in this manner. And so now it's finished running. Let's go see what's been created. All right, so the first thing that I want to show is it exports the NPS config. It then appends a timestamp onto the front of it. Um, and so it makes a copy of it with the timestamp on it. So you have a backup 
of the uh, MPS config. Um, it then writes the changes to the uh, to this version of the MPS config and it imports that. And here's the text file that it creates. So you can see the name of the domain, the group name that it's looking at, all the members that it sees that are in that group. And this is actually what's getting written to the, um, the MPS config. And it does that for all of the, all the connect request policies that you've defined inside of the script. Now, when we go into NPS, just right click here and refresh your connection request policies. And what you see here is this. So the first thing I do is write a timestamp as the very first entry. That way you can easily go in here, refresh your connection request policies, and just see very quickly when the last time was this ran. I then pull all the usernames in. Uh, I separate them all with an or, a pipe symbol, which is or. Uh, this up caret and this dollar sign are also regex syntax so that if we do an exact user match as to what's in between those two symbols. Um, and this would go on and on and on for all the users that you have. And at that point, what you're what we've been able to do now is is essentially get the Windows group matching functionality into the connection request policy, but we're doing it by username. And now what you have is inside of your connection request policy, you would add those attributes that you had down in your network policy, because every single time a request comes into the NPS server, even though it may not reach the network policy, it will always be processed by the connection request policy. So if we hand this functionality off to our connection request policies instead of network policies, then we know that we're always going to get that attribute back. So hopefully this uh, brief tutorial here helps you guys uh, and gals set this up. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. My email is um, in the uh, script itself. It's at nathar at microsoft.com. Uh, let me know. Thanks.